Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication. It's Wednesday, August 9th, and it's time for your fusion news update. Stories today include, one, this fusion reactor is held together with tape. Two, fusion development in Japan partnering with existing industry. Three, Department of Energy announces $4.6 million for research on public-private partnership awards to advance fusion energy. Four, Eater appears unstoppable despite recent setbacks. Five, growing European fusion industry. I also have a bonus for you at the end, so stick around. One, this fusion reactor is held together with tape. This article from IEEE Spectrum discusses the use of high temperature superconductors, or HTS, in the tokamak designs from Fusion Industry Association member, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS. It gives a fairly comprehensive overview of the benefits of using HTS tape, thin ribbons of superconductor layered with copper, silver, and other stabilizing materials, and the progress CFS has made so far in magnet development. While the high and high temperature superconductor refers to 77 Kelvin, the temperature of liquid nitrogen, as opposed to the near absolute zero temperatures that traditional superconductors operate at, the benefits of HTS are multitude. They can withstand higher magnetic fields, allowing for smaller reactors, and withstand more neutron damage, important for a fusion reactor. This was the topic of Chief Scientific Officer at CFS, Dr. Brandon Sorbum's PhD thesis. While HTS has benefits, as a relatively new technology, the company has had to do a lot of physics, engineering, and manufacturing development on their way to building their demonstration device, Spark, slated to come online in 2025. Additionally, they've had to buy a lot of tape. 10,000 kilometers will be needed to build Spark alone. This is a good read that focuses on some of the engineering and supply chain challenges of building a fusion reactor. It also mentions FAA member Helion Energy and their recent contract with Microsoft. Dr. Sorbonne looks forward with hope. 10 years ago, I was writing an academic paper about using HTS magnets to make fusion energy, and now we're building them. I'm watching it happen all around me. Maybe there really is a future where we put thousands of these plants out to the world by 2050 and solve the climate crisis. Two, fusion development in Japan partnering with existing industry. Partnerships between existing Japanese industry and fusion startups were covered in a few different stories recently. This is an interesting follow-up to the article I reported on in March that covered Japan's renewed interest in fusion energy. First, a collaboration between two FAA members was announced between Tokamak Energy and Sumimoto Corporation, a centuries-old diverse corporation with a wide array of investments and development projects. The two companies intend to partner on projects, including the scaling up and industrialization of the global fusion supply chain. Tokamak Energy Commercial Director Ross Morgan says, Sumimoto and Tokamak Energy recognize the importance of partnerships to accelerate the delivery of commercial fusion, and with our shared knowledge, we can deliver this. Second, US-based FIA member Blue Laser Fusion is partnering with Japanese companies that have expertise in fission power production and metal manufacturing. Blue Laser, founded last year by Nobel laureate and UC Santa Barbara professor Dr. Suji Nakamura, plans to use rapid-fire lasers in an as-yet undisclosed inertial confinement fusion design. While currently filing patents on the design, the company plans to build a small experimental plant in Japan by the end of the decade. Three, Department of Energy announces $4.6 million for research on public-private partnership awards to advance fusion energy. On July 25th, the U.S. Department of Energy announced this year's recipients of funding through the Innovation Network for Fusion Energy Program. The Infuse Program awards funding for research performed at participating universities and national laboratories in support of private fusion companies looking to overcome specific scientific or technical problems. $4.6 million of funding was awarded for 18 projects, 17 of which are in collaboration with FIA members. According to Dr. J.P. Elaine, DOE Associate Director of Science for Fusion Energy Sciences, six of these awards are to companies in the rising fusion-adjacent industry. These companies won't design fusion power plants on their own, but they will serve as domestic suppliers. These suppliers enable technologies that advance fusion in the U.S. Four. Eater appears unstoppable despite recent setbacks. Physics Today reported on a recent spate of delays in the international experimental tokamak, Eater. While it has been clear for some time that delays due to the coronavirus pandemic, supply chain issues, manufacturing defects, and regulatory issues were inevitable, the Eater organization now says they will be unable to provide an accurate 
estimate on the delays or cost increases until next year. Despite this, internal estimates have predicted delays of up to three years. One challenge to estimating costs of ITER is the complex internal accounting system that tracks multiple currencies, in-kind contributions of parts and equipment, and other factors, resulting in its own pseudocurrency, ITER units of account. These delays, especially those related to manufacturing defects in pipes and vacuum components, and a stop in assembly ordered by the French Nuclear Safety Authority, highlight many of the difficulties faced by the nascent fusion industry. Collaboration between fusion companies to face engineering and policy challenges will be vital to ensuring a successful future for fusion. According to ITER spokesperson Laban Koblenz, despite the delays, ITER hopes to have a positive influence on the private fusion industry. We are demonstrating that these massive, precise components needed for fusion energy can be built at industrial scale. We are developing the required new technologies as we go. Five, growing European fusion industry. Two articles recently discussed the growing fusion sector in Europe, with one looking at Europe as a whole and the other focusing on Germany. Europe, including the UK, has 10 fusion startups, with six in the EU and three in Germany. The three German companies, FIA members Proxima Fusion, Gauss Fusion, and Focus Energy, recently entered into an agreement to collaborate on technical research and on developing fusion policy and education. The regulatory environment in Germany looks favorable for fusion, following the precedent set by the UK and the US in regulating fusion separately from fission nuclear power. German research minister Bettina Stark-Watzinger said, a regulatory framework must be created to give companies planning security outside of nuclear law, which is simply not suitable for fusion. Finally, check out the bonus fusion news this week, a YouTube video from CFS that takes a tour of their commercial fusion campus in Devons, Massachusetts. An additional bonus item was announced after we finished recording this week's episode. Scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California were able to achieve ignition for a second time at the National Ignition Facility. On July 30th, fusion reactions in the experiment once again produced more energy than was input by the laser. Scientists at NIFS say the energy gain was larger than the experiment from December, but they are waiting to complete their analysis before announcing more details. The original ignition experiment at NIF was covered on this channel by Sid in December, and we'll cover more details about this result in future episodes. That's all for Fusion News this week. Stay tuned for our next update. Please like and subscribe for more Fusion News, and check out the links in the description if you want further information.